Well, first of all, the papers reporting this morning, uh, police may well be hunting for two more devices. Uh, if that is the case, there is still a clear and present danger, is there not? Yeah, and there will be, to be honest, Damon, until such time as, obviously, they believe it's necessary to drop the critical threat level. Um, for the time being, the authorities are going to be working very, very hard, following every lead they possibly can. Uh, most of the persons of interest, and bear in mind there are in excess of 3,000 persons of interest in this country the security services have on their radar, um, they will be picking up anybody that they can see as close as possible to, obviously, the perpetrator of the attack at the beginning of this week. And uh, they'll be closing off all the avenues. But they can't drop that level until such time as they feel confident to do Hannah, so. Hannah, that yeah. is so scary. 500, as Will pointed out there, 500 active terror-related investigations at any one time involving 3,000 people and on top of that 12,000 people who are on the police radar. How on earth do the security services monitor that or can, can they stay on top of that? It's really a question of numbers and resources and, um, and prioritising who, who is it exhibits what level of threat and, and, and the big question is whether that's done appropriately and actually I think we have to remember that that um, that this week's attack um, is actually the second the second time there's been a, a big bomb plot that's been successful in this country and there are numerous other plots that uh, ha that haven't happened because of the work of the security services yeah, I think I think we the general public I never know whether to be very frightened when I hear that or very heartened that this is all going on behind the scenes that we don't know about I mean, when you say significant, how, how significant are we talking about the things that have been foiled that we know nothing about, or can you not tell us anything about it? Well, I mean, there's obviously any number of plots that the security services haven't told us about um, what, that haven't led to successful um, convictions. But among those that have, we can see the many different ways in which um, the security services have gotten on top of, of what's happening and been able to stop it before it's happened. And there's a number of different ways. So in some cases, we've had the sort of traditional surveillance where they've picked up that someone's involved in activities. They've understood the wider networks. They've followed them. They've listened to their conversations. They've put listening devices in cars, in buildings. They've watched them build bombs and they've waited until almost the latest possible point that they can. It's a fine line, isn't it? Of when it's a you very go fine in. line. And with explosives, you can usually watch people uh, creating the devices and make a judgment between when they're about to go operational. But you need as much evidence as possible to secure um, a conviction and put people away. People who are planning to blow innocent civilians up, put them away a lot, as lo for as long as possible. The difficulty comes with the low tech attacks, where we've seen that decision has had to be made much more quickly. We've had cases where people have bought a knife that morning and been arrested in the afternoon because the security services learned from um, the killing of Lee Rigby that actually knife attacks can happen at any moment within 24 hours in that case. What sort of nightmare is this weekend and the events, the City Games in Manchester? How on earth do you screen those? How on earth do you get security involved in that? The FA Cup final, um, because as, we, as we've seen from the Manchester Arena attack, security cordon may have to go back or go out further and further and further from the, from the actual venue. Well, I think, again, it's really important that we carry on with our lives as normal and as best we possibly can without this inhibiting um, going to events, whether it be the FA, uh, whether it be to a marathon for, for that matter. Um, we're really good in this country at securing against these types of situations. And although one slipped through the net at the beginning of this week, I've worked with a few of the stadia across the country and they've been planning for years in terms of the preparations against this type of scenario of attack. Now, you've got so many different layers of security. You've got the venues themselves who will be counselling with the actual police to determine whether it's actually safe for the event to go ahead or if there's any specific intelligence that should make them consider otherwise. You've got the local councils that will be, again, potentially joined up with the police. You have the security that will be there. You'll have police. You'll have possibly military at quite a few of these events. You'll also have the private security as well that will no doubt be yeah. turning up with some of the attendees. What about the things we're seeing for the first time, like uh, police guards on trains? Well, I think it's a good thing.